Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Our guest this week is Jane Metcalf. Jane is the founder of Neo Life. That's neo.life if you want to look it up online. Neo Life is a media and events company tracking how digital tools and an engineering mindset are transforming human biology. Prior to that, she made chocolate on a pier in San Francisco at Cho Chocolate. Jane's probably best known as the co-founder of Wired Magazine, where uh, Kevin and I worked with her for quite a few years. How are you doing, Jane? Hey, I'm great. Good morning, both of you, Mark and Kevin. Thank yes, you. it's always lovely to hear your voice, Jane, and Likewise. to reconnect with whatever you're doing, because whatever you're doing is interesting, I have to say that. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. It totally is. And uh, we're, we're going to start by talking about some of your tools, and then we're going to talk about a very exciting project that's currently in the works. But let's start with uh, telling us about a table that you, uh, that you like. So I have had this, this table for, gosh, probably... 15 years or so. Um, and I am still finding uses for it all the time. It's, it's, it's by a company called Offi and OFFI. And it's uh, a magazine table made out of bent plywood. And they have this manufacturing process that allows them to bend the plywood. So it sort of um, curves on both edges. And then it's got a swoop in front where you would put your magazines. And what I love about it is it's got that sort of wonderful mid-century modern feel to it, although it was designed in the probably early aughts. Um, but uh, And they come in beautiful woods. But um, what's really cool about it is that you can actually turn it on its side or turn it on its end so that um, the curved part that um, is the table aspect of it is where your knees would go and then where the magazines would stand um, becomes a work surface. And there's a time when I was working from home and we had to do video conferences. And so my colleague would just pull up a chair and we would turn the mag table on its end and she would have this little work surface. And I was like, oh my God, this is like the, the TV dinner table, you know, of, <laughs> of the 21st century. Right, 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 right. So yes, yeah, so it's, it's kind this of like, so cool. yeah, right. It's, it's a multi-use uh, tool. Do you have magazines anymore? You know, funny you should ask. I do. I have a lot of magazines. I still wow, love magazines. Okay. It's a it's a reminder to read things um, that, you know, if I get the newsletter or, you know, notice that the website's been updated or whatever, it's just one more thing in my inbox or on my computer. And yes, I do. I love magazines. By the way, I love print still. Yes. <laughs> in all forms. <laughs> Okay. And so do we. Yeah. So what's another um, tool that's on your list? So I, again, dug into the things that I really love and use all the time. I mean, that mag table, you know, I used it on stage for an event the other night because it's so good looking. Um, the same cool. with my shopping basket. Um, you know, when you go to the farmer's market in Marin, you really want those farmers to respect you. And my shopping bag commands <laughs> respect. <laughs> it's also a great conversation starter because people are always saying, wow, great bag. And it makes them smile that you took time to like find a really nice thing. So it's, um, it's made out of palm leaf and it's woven and it's sort of a classic Moroccan souk, you know, shopper. Um, mm -hmm. So it sits flat on the ground, you know, it won't roll over, which really drives me crazy in the driveway. Yeah. I live on a hill, you know, and I'm tired of chasing apples downhill. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. <laughs> but what's really nice about it, and the key innovation here is the handle length. Because normally shopping baskets have to be carried at the end of straight arms. And I find that really uncomfortable. And you're constantly putting it down to sample something or putting it down to pay or whatever. 
these have shoulder straps. They're rolled leather shoulder straps, so you can carry them on your shoulders. And the straps are like beautiful colors. They're like raspberry and red and yellow and blue and green. And so they're just cheerful and they're, you know, sustainably grown palms. They're made in Morocco. And, um, you know, I found them actually here uh, in California. And I think they were like $68 or something. But when I was shopping online, you can get them for like 12 pounds from London. That's amazing. So, depending on where you live. And yeah. they also, I, I'm just looking at the photos. You can stack them inside each other too. Also. And I use them for everything. They come in different sizes. So I have, you know, uh, a, a, the smaller, taller one is for my like kale and celery and carrots and eggplant and cucumber, you know, like the long, tall vegetables. Um, and then the bigger, wider one, I can lay down, you know, a bottle of uh, a carton of milk or a bottle of wine or, or something like that. I use them all the time. I take them to the market. I take them to the beach. You know, I take them to work because, you know, I carry my lunch to work every day. Um, so I just, they're fabulous. Multi-purpose. Nice. Right. And in California, we, we're in this regime where you have to bring your own bag for most things. Um, it's, you know, even just regular shopping, you need something to carry it out with. And that could be, you could use that same shopping Suk shopper for that yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, I hate carrying something heavy in a plastic bag with those plastic handles cutting into your hand. Yeah, the end of plastic bags. Really cool. Right, okay. Ethically handmade in Morocco. Yep. I love it. Um, so what's what's a third uh, tool for us, Jane? Well, um, what else am I loving these days? Um, okay, so this one my son has been totally uh, laughing at me for. It's a gamer mouse pad. Do you guys, no. have you heard of this? Have you seen these? No, uh, I, I haven't used a mouse pad in a while. I, I have an optical mouse that sort of slides over or whatever. So you just have it on um, your desk surface? Yeah. Huh. Well, I find that grating <laughs> in some way. I want, <laughs> I'm very sensitive, you know. <laughs> I chafe easily. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, I, I, I guess I'm just accustomed to having some kind of a surface. But, you know, I have a big monitor and a little tiny mouse pad doesn't correspond to my giant monitor. And so I'm forever, you know, sliding the mouse off the, the four by six inch, you know, rectangle. Um, and right this minute, I am working on my dining room table, like a lot, Um and so, you know, I come in with my hot cup of tea or, um, you know, my car keys or my chargers. And I'm thinking, gosh, what am I doing? I'm ruining my dining room table for, uh, finish. So, um, so I started looking for, for mouse pads. And, you know, the gamer pads are for, you know, wild mouse movement. Um, and a lot of them have, you know, like ID, LED lights around them, <laughs> you know, all sorts of uh tricked out features, but this one is just a simple um, piece of like microfiber. It's like suede on one side and smooth on the other. It's about 30 by 15 inches. Um, and it's slightly bigger than my monitor. So I have total mouse freedom. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and so you put the keyboard on top of the Everything. pad too? The keyboard, the mouse, I see. you know, my cables, my hot cup of coffee or tea. If I spill my water on the mouse pad, no problem. My, uh -huh. you know, my, my table is protected and my mouse pad, you just wipe it off. Right. It's washable. And the surface of this mouse pad is, is, is smooth or does it have a texture? No. Or does it, does it have it's, a, it's, it's no? smooth, but it's also like non slip. So it's not mm. slippery. Um, and the other thing that's nice, I mean, depending on what your work surface is, it's warm, you know, it's not cold. So it's right. kind of a nice, mm -hmm. um, a nice touch. And they this come in different nice. colors too. It's inexpensive. Yeah. I have a, uh, an old like steel case desk that has a glass top and it, it is cold. And this looks really nice because it takes up a lot of space and I can just rest my arms and it feels like, it looks like it will warm. I'm sensitive too. Oh, good. It's not just no, me. <laughs> I always knew that about you, Mark. <laughs> a sensitive fellow. Uh -huh. So it's, yes, uh, only 14 bucks too. That's right? Great. I know. What a deal. Yeah. 
So that's it. Uh-huh. Oh. And so it's not a non-slip thing. So right? there's okay. another nice aspect to it. Um, if you do find yourself using a pen, does anyone use pen mm-hmm. and paper anymore? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I occasionally yeah. do. <laughs> it's a really nice surface to write on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, and it comes in two colors. I like the light color. It comes in more colors than that, doesn't it? I thought it was like, I saw a pink one. I saw a blue one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it does come in other colors. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Don't get the pink. That's nice. Just don't. Look at the, if it, came, if it came in yellow, I would definitely get it. Actually, the yellow would be cool. Yeah, but these are pastels. They're very Chinese colors. I think it's made in China. The palette strikes yeah. me as Chinese. It's great. I'm getting one right now. Yay! Oh my god, I feel so great. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. I want you to get a soup basket too. I, I, I'm yeah, very tempted. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, Jane, your your uh, fourth tool um, that's uh, here about that. It's um, well, explain what it is. Ties. I'm not sure. So they're um, they're gear ties, and gear ties. Which is what's a gear? Oh my tie? gosh, it's it's anything. Um, that you need to attach. So before this podcast, I spent, I want to say 90 to 120 seconds unraveling my headphones. (laughs) And I really, really hate that. Um, And I also think that if you don't tie up your headphones, um, they, they fail faster. Um, And so there's a night tie, um, night ties, I Z E, um, it's a um, it's a steel wire. It's a, a bendable steel wire coated with rubber um, that you that they come in different sizes. There's three inch, six inch, twelve inch, um, and I use the three inch on um, headphone um, cables. Cables. So it's like a cable tie. It's like a reusable cable reusable tie. cable tie. That's exactly what it is. Um, okay. And what's nice about them is, I mean, you don't have to. You know those the way you get like your electric toothbrush cable comes with one of those, you know, plastic cable ties, you know, that you have to twist. Um, These are like, boom, you just wrap it around and in one move you've attached it. You don't have to figure out, wait, do I turn it to the left or the right? Oh no, I'm making it tighter. You know, it's like, it's thick enough so that you can see and you just twist it around once and you're done. Um, So the three inch are great for headphone cables. the six inch is great for computer cables. So your laptop um, power supply. I actually use two different sizes. Um, the uh, the six inch I use for the part that goes from the you know I have a Mac um, a MacBook, and so from the block to your computer, I use the shorter one, and then the thicker cable that goes from your block to the power supply, I use a longer one. Um, and it's just, they're really fast and they come in bright colors so you can find them. You don't confuse them. Um, and then they have a 12 inch one. So it's really thick and really long. And you can use those around your skis. You can use them to, you know, attach. Uh, you could, you know what? You could use them to attach the handles of your supermarket basket. <laughs> <laughs> and you could even color coordinate because they come nice. in a bunch yeah. of different colors. Right. So one of the things uh, I've discovered about using ties like this is that you, you can't have too many of them. And it's you want to have you, ha- you want to have like a stash of them. You want to be able to grab one and just use it. And so you you want to have them in multiples. It doesn't work just at one or two. You've got to have a, you know, a container full of them. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, I highly recommend the assorted uh, pack of 32. Yeah, no, it's a pack of 16. You can get the pack, so of, 30, a pack of 32. I'm actually thinking of yeah. getting like a subscription, you know, if they could just send me. <laughs> um, oh, and, somebody will do that for sure. Yeah. And if we had done this podcast before the holidays, I would give you my special stocking stuffer secret, which is just every year. Just put these every year in your family nice. stocking. I'll, I'll always appreciate it. <laughs> They do, yeah. they do, and they think yeah. genius. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Are you ordering? Are you ordering now? I want you to order now. It's a goal. I need the dopamine hit of knowing that I have convinced you. Yeah, I, I probably will pull the trigger on these as well because I'm just thinking of like my instant pot right. with uh, and the uh, the stick blender and all that stuff with the with the cords, and I hate having cords that are all 
messy and tangled up. And this looks like a great way to oh, yeah, convenient. It's a total pet peeve. And it just makes me, you know, because what's happening inside my machines is so frenzied. But if I can look out and think, look how calmly my cables are arranged, <laughs> I find it somewhat soothing. <laughs> yeah. And and we look down and see your mouse pad and yeah. it makes you right? feel smooth. Yeah. It makes you feel smooth, right? Not chaffed. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we're learning so much about you. I think now is when we're supposed we're supposed to do the moisturizer okay. next, I think. <laughs> I, I think we, we, we might have done some kind of moisturizer on our la- the last time. You were on, and I'll do a link. I'll put a link. Yes, there was. It was a vitamin something. Yeah, that was like really expensive moisturizer. But you found like a- oh no, that's not moisturizer. Oh no, I know what you're talking about. Vitamin C. It's C E ferulic yeah. acid. That stuff is magic. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link yes. to that episode as well because that was that was interesting. You have something else yeah. that seems like magic. B two B two love or B two. Well, love. I do, and I you know, I didn't follow directions, but. Um, I was just, once you got me going on this, it's like, oh, tools. Yeah. Um, I mean, a tool for getting out of bed when you're sick is, you know, ultimately. It's it's called medicine. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, my grandmother used to say, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And I I didn't know what she meant until, you know, it's like I'm lying sick in bed. And I was like, I have so much I have to do. Um, and, you know, everyone around me was sick for three weeks with this thing. And I just looked at what was going to be happening in the next three weeks of my life. And I thought, I, that's not an option. Um, and so I was super dehydrated. You know, my head was spinning. I wasn't sleeping, which was meaning that, you know, every night it was getting worse because, you know, I wasn't restoring. I wasn't getting back to homeostasis. Um, and so I finally bit the bullet and tried what I'd been reading about and hearing about, which is um, vitamin and nutrient injections. And, you know, it's funny, I mentioned this to my MD recently, and uh, and she said, oh, well, that's very trendy these days, (laughs) you know, which is sort of a cutting thing coming from a science professional, medical professional. Um, But basically, uh, it's it's injections of B complex vitamins, which are so essential to you know healthy functioning of our bodies. So 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 like you mean like injection like like a needle in your arm kind of injection? <laughs> yeah. Is there another kind? <laughs> well, I don't know. So like, are you doing this yourself? No, 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 no. Or no. do you do you have to have a professional perform this? Yeah. So I mean, if if I mean people do inject themselves for. All kinds of things, right, like right? diabetics, for sure. Yeah, right. um, But no, I do not inject myself, and I have no desire to inject myself. You know, but if you went to your doctor and said, you know, can I have a bag of saline? I'm feeling really dehydrated. He's or she's going to say, I'm sorry, you're not, you know, that, that's not a good use of my time. I'm here to treat people who are, you know, who are really sick. And it's like, you know, I've got a really bad cold, and that's not the same thing. And so, you know, normally these tools like injections and IV drips – are relegated to hospital visits. And, you know, if you've got a really bad cold, you're probably not going to go to the hospital or the emergency room. And so um, there's this company called B12 Love that has sprung up all over the Bay Area. They have, I think I counted 15 locations um, where a registered nurse or um, naturopathic um, uh, doctor or uh, medical assistant, all registered healthcare professionals, will administer an injection of um, vitamins and nutrients for you uh, in their own locations. They call them lounges, an IV lounge. And they have these photos on their website of these like fabulous white leather lounge chairs with like, you know, comfy blankets. And um, you can just imagine taking your, you know, iPad, not your iPad, your uh, like a, what do you call it? Sleep pad uh, over your eye, eye mask taking in your eye mask and cuddling up under a blanket and getting an injection of, you know, saline and B12 and, um, you know, all sorts of other things that uh, are going to make you feel better. Um, Did it work? So here's the thing. I could not get out of bed. So I went in and I got my first injection, um, which in the end was hard to choose. You know, we had to uh, go back and forth between um, all the various things that they offered. But yeah, um, tons of things. Yeah, 
I'm a premium kind of girl. So I went mm-hmm. for um, their premium combos, like the premium injections. There's like hormones and hangovers or moody, anxious insomniac, um, or there's the kitchen sink. Um, but I went for um, the kick butt travel shot because I was getting ready to travel. Um, and that has high doses of all the B vitamins, and then it's got extra strength B12. Um, so I did that in one cheek. And then um, in the other cheek, I got what they call one of their back bar injections. And this one had magnesium, B12, mic, and taurine, um, which are amino acids. And that combo was to help me sleep um, and calm you know, everything down, uh, because, you know, at that point I was doing Christmas lists and work to do lists and packing lists and all the rest of it. So, um, so I did the injections. I went home. Um, I went to bed. I slept through the night. It was the first time I'd slept through the night in like a week. Um, I got up the next day, I went to work and, you know, I was teasing my colleague that she just wasn't keeping up. We got a lot to do here today. We've got this going on and I was firing on all pistons Um, in full disclosure, I will admit that the next day I was not feeling well again. So then I went back and got the drip, the IV drip. Um, and I basically did the same combo, uh, with extra saline. Um, and the same thing happened. I went home that night. I slept. I was able to get up the next day and work and that was it. I never spent another day in bed after that. And I got through a very, very, very hectic and physically, physically demanding period without getting sick. And I am so grateful. That's really cool. Is there, is there science supporting this right now? I mean, are there, is this, is this more of a kind of, kind of like a quantified self thing where people are kind of experimenting on themselves to gain the evidence or is there, has, is it old enough that actually people have been studying this or, or what's, what's, what's the, what's it based on? It must, the idea must have, come around about because somebody had some evidence. Well, you know, the, the $40 billion um, nutritional supplement and vitamin market um, is, yeah, somebody somewhere thinks there's some some evidence here. Um, You know, it comes from the fact that, you know, we know that these vitamins and nutrients are um, important for basically the essential functioning of your body. So, you know, it's like creating nerve and blood cells, you know, it, B12 helps, um, helps make DNA, actually. Um, if you have a B12 deficiency, you know, that's kind of a serious condition that um, can lead to um, lethargy and anemia and um, all sorts of other unpleasant um, experiences. And when you're sick, does your B12 go down? Is that what happens? Is that why you need the extra when you're sick? You know, that's a good question. Um, I don't know that I mean, I doubt that my blood test would have shown a vitamin B deficiency when I was feeling that way, Um, which is why, you know, therefore doctors aren't going to give it to you because your, you know, blood tests are normal. Um, But what it doesn't account for and what science and evidence-based medicine doesn't account for is the fact that if you give somebody a little extra, they might feel better. And, you know, unfortunately, there is not rigorous scientific evidence that proves any of this um or, or yet i mean and that's the thing i mean that's the thing about the quantified self is that all these people you're, you're kind of doing this experiment where where people are going back because it works and so that's exactly that's some kind of that's some kind of evidence and it's for you it worked exactly and you know was it the mic and the taurine? Was it the B12? Was it the magnesium? I take huge amounts of magnesium. And I really do think that's helped me both sleep and it's helped control muscle cramping, which I was prone to since I was a kid. Um, and I've been experimenting with different types of magnesium for, um, for both sleep and also um, mental and cognitive performance, um, which are actually uh, – kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum. So now I'm trying to put the mental performance version of magnesium, the um, magnesium three and eight uh, in the morning, and then magnesium glycinate, which is more for calming and sleeping uh, in the evening. So yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think we will ultimately find something that um, 
you know, the medical profession will acknowledge is useful uh, because of this experimentation. And, you know, the fact that you can order a blood test online and go into a lab and get the results on your own, that's kind of amazing these days. And the fact that you can go to, I mean, they have these lounges, but they also have pop-up stores in, you know, homeopathic or naturopathic clinics, but they also have them in spas and skin salons and places. So why can't you just inject it at home? I'm sure you could, if you want to deal with that. I mean, there are services that will, you can call them and they will show up at your door yeah, that's with true. injections and IV drips. Right, right. right. Probably could. So I just want to be mindful that uh, of our time, because I, I want to devote a little bit of time to talking about your latest project, which is a uh, book based on what you've been working on for the last several years. Indeed. Yeah. So, and it, you know, it's been influenced by so many things and Kevin, you know, I have to give you credit for many aspects of what I am doing. You know, Kevin's book out of control talked about um, bringing an engineering mindset to biology and, and vice versa and vice versa, bringing biological thinking to, um, to complex uh, systems machines. Yeah. and machines. And, um, what he wrote about 26 years ago is actually all happening now. Um, so you now know, Kevin, that's your, that's your timeline. You're really good at 25 years. 25 <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I subtitled and and by the way, I think the inspiration for the subtitle came from Stuart, but it was, I called the, the neobiological civilization. Exactly. Did Which, that come from Stuart? I didn't know that. I've been crediting uh, you for the last three years. Well, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't, remember exactly but it might have i've might i might have heard Stuart use it before i'm before i put it in my subtitle okay it's very probable that um but i it's lost in the sands of time <laughs> anyway um so neobiological thinking um is now reality and you know, since you wrote that book, we've sequenced the human genome, we've learned how to edit, and now we are writing synthetic genomes. We are hacking the brain. We are, you know, hacking our own longevity and, and, and bodies. You know, synthetic biology offers us extraordinary opportunities to transform agriculture, for instance, you know, reduce the amount of land and water and pesticides and insecticides that we use. You know, so what are future foods going to be like and how will they impact our bodies? And, you know, ultimately we have the tools to alter our own evolution and it's happening right now. I mean, there are scientists editing the human germline, which means changes that will impact future humans. Um, there are scientists working on gene drives to control, you know, mosquitoes or um, the transference of Lyme disease. Um so these experiments are happening all over the place in labs, in academia, in, you know, government uh, controlled situations, but they're also happening in garages and um, kitchens and gyms and, um, uh, you know, uh, nail salons. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I, you know, I had this moment where I realized that um, I am standing on the cusp of another major transformation you know, much like the digital revolution. And I decided to call it a neobiological revolution. And so I started publishing um, stories about this in a, in a weekly newsletter and on the website. But then I realized a few things, you know, electronic information is a fabulous way to touch a lot of people, but it's not necessarily a great way to get people to slow down and ponder and consider. Um, and so I've always loved print I've always loved great design, and I think books have the potential to um, be shared in a way that's possibly more thoughtful and that could reach an offline audience or could reach you know, an audience that are normally online, but in a different mindset. And so you know, taking some of our um, ideas from Wired, which is, you know, let's make a time capsule, let's like make issues of the magazine feel like a time capsule, I decided to make a book. And so this book features 25 visionaries. They are mostly scientists, 
There are a few uh, science fiction authors, and there are um, a half a dozen artists, visual artists, conceptual artists, who have contributed their visions to the future of our species. And we've compiled them into this magnificent hardcover book that was designed by my dear friend, uh, a National Design Award winner, Jennifer Morla. And um, it's at the printers now. And we just uh, launched a Kickstarter campaign to support it. And you're all, and you're uh, you're eighty percent too of uh, so you're going great guns. You're just blazing. Um, and you'll probably do you have stretch goals? You know what? We have to work on those this weekend because <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know taking it taking another dose of B twelve love. <laughs> I was saying that at the beginning of the week. You know, we got to think about our stretch goals, and everyone around me was like, "Lane, Jane, let's just." reach our goal. Okay. We can think about that later. It's like, <laughs> well, four days later, we're 80% funded. So let's, let's have that conversation. And I should just say that people should, we'll have a link, but definitely check out some of the sample spreads and the cool, like kind of iridescent foil lettering on the cover. What, what, what is the deal with that cover? It's like really cool looking. I'm so glad you asked because that treatment cost me 90 cents a book. <laughs> it is, um, it's a silver lithographic foil, um, which is a, um, a hot stamp on the book. It's then covered with a matte laminate coating, but then they, which dulls it a little bit, but then they bring it back with a spot UV treatment. So oh, wow. it's wow. magnificent. Wow. And yeah, just, yeah. Well, and, and this conversation reminds me of Wired because what people don't appreciate was the the sort of artifactual, um, evo- the high evolution, highly evolved artifactual excellence that Wired magazine was, and the care that people like Jane took in what right. it looked and felt like. You're and on that so, trajectory, um, pushing, this, pushing the you're on that same trajectory further out. <laughs> Of what yeah. was possible to make on paper. Well, you know, when we started Wired, you know, Kevin, I, I distinctly remember your excitement about this conversation about generating positive visions of the future. Yeah. And it's true that our future is often described by um, our science fiction creators. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you're telling a story, there has to be conflict. And that's what makes it interesting. And that's what makes science fiction dystopian. Um, and I just felt like there are so many um, alarmist responses to the science. And, you know, I have to stop people and say, okay, yes, there are ethical and moral considerations. Yes, there could be unintended consequences. All of that is absolutely true. And these are very serious tools that we need to consider very deeply. But let's, can we at least first celebrate the idea of eliminating genetically inherited diseases? You know, can, can we first talk about stopping cancer? You know, can we first celebrate the potential of these? And then let's think about, you know, how it can be misused. But I just worry that people are um, having knee-jerk reactions to things. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. You're 100%, 1,000% correct in that. And not only should... Um, the other one is there's always unintended, you know, uh, adverse uh, effects, but there's also unintended benefits. Yeah. Yes, that we should be prepared for the unintended good things, um, and um, there will be those as well. So, so let's keep an eye out for for those too. Oh, Kevin, um, will you write a story for us on the unintended? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's really great. Yeah, that's yeah. good because yeah, unintended consequences are always usually presented as being negative <laughs> negative but a lot of them are uh, yeah. very very it's... positive so um but we want to be ready for them so so um this is really great i think you you're right jane you're right at the the dawn of this next century which will be this combination of digital and biological in many ways the combination of the physical and the natural which is you know, this it's not, it's not like we're going to leave the digital stuff behind. We're going to take it forward and mix it into this biological stuff. And it's going to be very, very, very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. And, you know, there'll be naturals. There'll be people who are, you know, purely biological. Yeah. You know, there'll be cyborgs. Right. and they'll- There'll be the Amish. The Amish who are, say, under no circumstances will I or any of my descendants ever modify our right. genes. 
Um, and yeah, and then there's other people who say like tomorrow I'm That's signing right. up. It's going to happen That's tomorrow. Right. So. I want to alter, you know, these five genes so that I can travel in outer space without losing muscle mass or dying from radiation, you know, or like athletes. This is one of the scenarios that we worked on, you know, it's like super, <laughs> so they will be, you know, enhanced, genetically enhanced athletes, but maybe they will be you know, natural athletes that don't even use steroids. Wouldn't that be amazing? So I, I should just say the, the best way to like learn about uh, Neo Life and about the Kickstarter is to simply go to neo.life and there's a link to the Kickstarter there. And also you can sample um, all the cool stuff that has been featured over the years in the newsletter and on the website. Exactly. This is uh, the takeoff. And, you know, we've been talking to scientists and, you know, science fiction writers and, and um, artists and, um, you know, that kind of very insider group, which, you know, I, I want this to be relevant to them because as it turns out, you know, neuroscientists don't talk to geneticists and they're not talking to, you know, nutritionists and they're not talking to the longevity people for the most part. You know, their, their fields are so intense and moving so quickly. It's all they can do to stay um, focused on that. And so Neolife is a chance to have a sort of um, a souk, you know. It's like where all of these ideas come together and where people can talk to each other um, and kind of get a sense of how our life, you know, in every sense of the word, is evolving. And so I'm really hoping with this book that we can reach an audience that aren't just, you know, scientists and, and, um, and biotech investors, um, but reach beyond to a broader group of people who care about what the future of our species is. Well, that's really great. I hope that does work and people should go. And if they can uh, contribute to the Kickstarter fund and take part in some of the stretch goals that will be coming very shortly. Thank you. And Kevin, I just have to say thank you for what is now almost three decades of inspiration. Well, you're I mean, very welcome. It was, and you're, you're part of that. You keep me inspired. Oh, well, I love that. And Mark, working with you guys has always been fantastic. I so appreciate you giving me the chance to tell your audience about what we're doing. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. And thanks for the tools. You're, you yeah. are a very tool. You are a tool person, even though you don't know it. <laughs> hey everybody, it's your host, Mark. And I wanted to thank you for listening to the cool tools show And I also wanted to let you know that we've got a lot more going on at Cool Tools than just this podcast. We also have the Cool Tools website, which has a new tool review every day. And you can get there by going to cool-tools.org. We also have four different newsletters that you can subscribe to. And you can subscribe to those from the Cool Tools page. We have this podcast that you're listening to right now. We also have a YouTube channel where we review tools. Check that out. YouTube channel out by going to youtube.com slash cool tools. And one of the things I'd like to ask you is if you're really enjoying everything that we are producing, go to our Patreon page and support us there. You can sign up and give us as little as $1 a month. And that would mean a lot to us. The money that we get from Patreon goes towards a lot of things. We transcribe our podcast interviews so that you can read them online We pay for editing of our podcasts and for our videos. We pay our contributors. We have video production costs. We have equipment costs. We have hosting costs. And the money you give us through Patreon also goes to support Cool Tools Lab. Anything you give is a huge help. And one of the things that we do is if you are a contributor to Patreon, we'll give you a shout out on air. And so I have a few people here to thank this week. Mark Lyonage. Micah Gates, Monty Zukowski, Patrick James McNally, Robert Cohen, Scott, Spence Lloyd, Steve Avery, Steve Golden, Steve Levine, Tom Hess, William Phillips, Aaron Nipper, Durab Patel, Glenn Mercer, Jay Walker, Jeff Bonner, Ryan Jarrell, Pat Daly, Patrick Kennedy, Troy Wallet, Mike Camerate, Nicole Harkin, Tim Youssef, Scott Reed. Thanks all of you for supporting Cool Tools. And if you would like to have a shout out, go over to the Patreon page and sign up. And thanks for listening to the Cool Tools podcast. We'll see you next week.